We're live. Um, we're live. It's it's going to take me a minute to set up here, and I do apologize. Um, today was a very crazy day, and I would have normally tried to get everything set up before I went live, but it was screaming at me that Facebook was going to cancel the live stream if I didn't start. Yeah. So, uh, sorry for the echo as well. <laughs> um, Yes. So I, yes, today has been a very crazy day. Um, I don't even have all my links all together yet. Um, I just a couple hours ago found out that we are going to be traveling this weekend. Um, and so there's lots to do and, and pack and find a place for the dog and blah, 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 blah. Excuses, I know. But um, <laughs> that's what happened. It's true. So, and I am unfortunately very very honest my husband always says that i don't know how to lie and that it's impossible for me to lie so <laughs> um all right so i saw that trash man is here and he did the intro so we'll get that going he says live from the orwellian nightmare it's the lady known to youtube as a terrorist to those oppressed as a freedom fighter to the karens as the dread pirate making them walk the plank and with that here's dolly and then there's some little swords crossed at the end of the exclamation points that is excellent i'm gonna put that on the screen for everyone to see see the little swords it's so cute <laughs> oh goodness Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So we'll see who's here and then we'll worry about getting all the links together, I guess. Um, let's see. This microphone is in the way so that I can't see people. All right. Let's see who we've got. Oh, why, why run naked for? That's an interesting one. Um, Irene Satterfield is in. Christopher Dunn, Jesse Meek, Andy Robichaud, Big D. Uh, Dave Simmons, John Morgan, Tristan Goodrich, Kristoff is here, Kelly Karshner, El Elemental, um, James Hyen, Jace Waters, Pierre is in, hello Pierre, Q is in, um, Iron Daisies to a Metalhead, uh, let's see, who else, Cap'n Mac 82, Mr. Hellspawn, William Cooper, um, ooh, A.N.D., I think. I think that's how you might say it. Robin, no, the state has not taken me. Not yet. Um, <laughs> Christoph Harper says she's late watching videos or organizing the escape. He may not be wrong. <laughs> Michael Clark, uh, Michael Frolich is in. Hugh Galbraith. Let's see. Raymond Leverenz is in. Jay the Magic Robot. Georgia Weatherman. Um, bop, 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 bop. Tommy Walker, um, Benjamin Sholneck, who also says greetings from Rochester, New York. You poor, poor soul. James Parsons and Astro Guy, Tennessee Beowulf, Frank. <laughs> That's nice and simple. Uh, Lone Wolf is in Christopher Robeson. Bill Avery, AL, one Ron, Tony Rose Blight, Sepson. Trichinosis, <laughs> Matig 89CH, JJ, and 23 Degrees is in, and that is a channel that is starting out, and it's a pretty good one. You guys should check it out. The Unknown Tree, Nate Marks, Patrick McGrate, um, <laughs> Omega Raysets is here, and he says, Rassets, Rossets. Damn it, I did it. He was making fun of me for saying his name wrong every time. And I told him I was going to get it right this time. And then I did not. And it just happened again. But he's here. And he says that he's in the house. And he put the pronunciation again. And I still screwed it up. Uh, Crazy Uncle Bob says, Greetings, fellow deplorable infidel flying squirrels. I like that. I like that. <laughs> okay so let's uh let me get these links up i have some exciting stuff today that wasn't even wasn't even on the list of things um let me find we'll 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 open with this one because i saw this one and was like what 
what? Um, it's just going to take me a minute to pull up the news article here. If this is this is what's going around town and what's going around the state right now. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You guys ready for this? I probably shouldn't even tell you guys about this because if I if something happens, it's going to implicate me. <laughs> but I, I guess in, in the interest in the interest of liberty. We're going to go with it. Uh, so among all, we're going to stop this video playing from CBS Boston. First of all, stop it. So we, we, the main topic today was going to be, um, a Cato article that came out and talked about um oh, i just realized we didn't do sponsors well here so you can see this lovely thing so we'll cover this story real quick and then we'll go to some sponsors and some important links for the day um so yeah we were going to talk about a cato poll that came out um about how most americans are actually afraid to talk about their political views we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of places that are now making it a crime to not wear a mask but this trumps it i think so we know that when all of this first started, right, Rhode Island was locking down their borders and they were hunting people down from out of state and all of that fun stuff, right? They were tracking down the New Yorkers. They were going door to door. Well, now Massachusetts, like months after this thing has calmed down, has decided to put in a new travel order that requires quarantine upon entering Massachusetts or else you face a $500 fine. Now, the funny thing is, in the fine print, this $500 fine is not a one-time $500 fine. It is $500 per day of violation. And um, this article isn't actually clear at how, um, how they're going to track this, but... Um, there are some suggestions out there and there are some rumors out there and they are all as wonderfully Orwellian as you would expect. So check this out. So this just happened today. So there's this new travel order. Thanks to Governor Baker. And sure, we'll open it in Microsoft Word. Um... And it just gives us, what, the text of the emergency order? Ugh, that's some crap. That is some crap. But um, I believe there's also, yeah, there's a link that we can look at in a second. So if you leave the state, if you leave the state for anything beyond transitory, um, <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> uh, he says, much love can, from Kansas. Here's some vacation funds. Thank you, Jesse. Um, <laughs> so, yes, um, if you are going to be leaving the state for anything beyond transitory travel, now, transitory travel, they consider just driving through. If you stop anywhere or make an overnight state somewhere, it is no longer considered transitory travel and now you are a very bad terrible person that upon returning to massachusetts or arriving in massachusetts you have to fill out a form and promise to either quarantine for the mandatory 40 uh, 14 days or pay out of pocket to get yourself a covid test and the requirements of what that quarantine are going to look like and all the forms that you need to fill out and all that fun stuff with it are are pretty extreme honestly so this goes into place august 1st so luckily i will beat the deadline um and it also includes incoming college students so the only states that are exempt from this are connecticut new hampshire rhode island vermont maine hawaii new jersey and new york 
Uh, New York is probably just because otherwise Bloomberg would make a total stink about it, like he did with Rhode Island. Hawaii, uh, there are rumors it's because Governor Baker is actually taking a Hawaii uh, vacation pretty soon, and so he needs to be exempt from his own emergency order. Of course. Of course. Um, This is ridiculous. So this, like I said, this also includes incoming college students. So if you are a college student um, and you are coming, because the, the state schools have announced that they are doing all online classes, but labs are still going to be in person. So you still need to, if you are not like living in the same town as your college, you still have to live on campus because you might have one lab a week or two lab classes a week that you have to attend in person. I actually have some clients that this is happening to right now. It's also true with uh, the performing arts and like art classes and, and things like that. You have to be in person. So you could end up with one class that meets Monday, Wednesday, Friday for an hour or something. And now you're required to live on campus or in an apartment around campus. So Say that you are, let's see, Maine is not exempt. So say that you are a, oh, Maine is on there. Okay, uh, Pennsylvania, we'll say, or um, Delaware or something. Say that you are a college student from Delaware and for some reason you are coming to Massachusetts. (sighs) You are coming to Massachusetts for school. Hmm. By the way, uh, Krista, I have not responded to your email yet. The answer is Mac lipstick. And this particular one is Ruby Woo. That is the answer. Mac lipstick. Um, it's worth it. Trust me. (laughs) Um, so yeah. So you now now the interesting thing is, is so they, there is a dedicated moving day if you are a college student, right? In um, some of these schools around here, it is um, August 24th, I believe. In some of the other schools, it's August 31st. So say that your move-in date is August 24th. Well, you have to do a mandatory quarantine for two weeks or get a COVID test. Now, you're a poor college student, so you're probably not going to get a COVID test. You're probably going to have quarantine. So that means that you actually need to arrive two weeks early and find some place to stay because you're not going to be allowed onto campus to move in on your designated move-in day because you're going to have to quarantine. Um, you can't quarantine in your dorm room because one of the requirements is you are quarantined only with people you have traveled with. If there is someone in the home that did not travel with you, you need to be kept in a separate door that needs to be, or kept kept in a separate room that needs to have a door in between that needs to be closed at all times, unless you're going to the bathroom or someone is delivering you food. Um, It is required that you get food delivery. By the way, you're not allowed to go to the grocery store. And you are not allowed to leave the room, yet you're also not allowed to have any contact with the food delivery people. So I'm not really sure how that's going to work. That's some of the requirements that we'll get to in a minute. Um, This also includes parents that are dropping off students for move-in day. So if you are a parent, uh, you also need to show up two weeks early and quarantine for that two weeks before you can help your kid move in. Conversely, if your kid is from Massachusetts and you are dropping them off in, say, Delaware, Pennsylvania, wherever, then when you need when you come back, even though you didn't spend the night anywhere, just the act of dropping them off at a college campus for some reason is not exempt, and then you need to quarantine for two weeks. Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, and... Now, they say that they're not going to be stopping cars. Okay, but we're going to expect people to comply. There's a ton of signage out there to make it clear what the rules are. Uh, Mr. Roverpilot, what you missed is that I was late. um, And I didn't have my crap together to start because I last minute found out that we're traveling this weekend. And I was busy. I have to get my car inspected. I have to pack, find a place for the dog, blah, 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 blah. 
So I was late today and I didn't have my shit together. So what we're starting off with is this new thing that just got announced today. And it is a travel ban, quarantine ban in the state of Massachusetts. Oh, and that's right. I have something else to tell you guys about that as well. I got some insider information that we'll discuss. Um... So, but you're, you're, oddly enough, you're exempt if you are traveling just for work. So you can't drop off your kid at a college without quarantining, but you can go to work and back without quarantining. Though theoretically, I mean, if you are driving somewhere and then working there, you're spending more time than if you are just dropping off a child at a college campus. But okay. Okay. Um, this is laughable. Since March, the people in Massachusetts have made great sacrifices and shown great discipline. As a result, our state has made great progress to slow the spread of COVID-19 and gradually reopen. That is a load of crap because, yeah, we were allowed to gradually reopen. We're still not fully open. Um, bars and things are not going to be allowed to open bars clubs, any, any place that does not serve food where people would congregate, any place that is not retail or does not serve food where people might congregate is not allowed to open until there is a vaccine. Phase four is vaccine. So I don't know what he's talking about of how we've been able to reopen. We were also the last state to like open golf courses and outdoor activities. There's still a lot going on here that rules wise that isn't going on other places. And one of the reasons that Massachusetts was so bad is because Massachusetts was one of the states that was putting COVID patients in nursing homes. And a lot of the hotspots can be traced back to nursing homes, that in a Biogen meeting, but <sighs> ridiculous. One of the casinos in Boston, well, in, in the area, in Boston, the Encore Casino has reopened, which is interesting. Um, none of the bars or clubs are allowed to open. They're not allowed to serve alcohol on the floors, but they're allowed to serve it in the restaurants and people have to wear masks all the time. So what you're going to have is a casino of people full of people with masks that are all drunk because the restaurants are still allowed to serve alcohol. So what people are going to do is they're going to go and get their dinner or get a little appetizer or something. They don't even have to order food because restaurants, as long as a restaurant physically serves food, they're allowed to, to sell their alcohol. <laughs> so people are just going to go to the restaurant to order all of their drinks and they're still going to be wandering around drunk in the casino. Like, and, like, there's rules that, like, you can't sell alcohol past 10 p.m. because apparently, you know, coronavirus doesn't affect people before 10 p.m. I don't know. People are going to smuggle in nips. It's not that difficult. Gee whiz. Anyways. Hmm. This is just absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. Um... Now, let's see if they, oh, sorry, I will put my phone on silent for you guys. Um, okay, so here are the actual requirements on the state website. So all individuals over the age of 18 and uh, unaccompanied minors entering Massachusetts who are not coming from a COVID lower risk state and do not fall within certain limited exemptions must complete this form upon or prior to entry to the state. Failure to complete this form or failure to comply with the quarantine, if applicable, may result in a $500 fine per day. And what's interesting here is they haven't expressly stated this, but there was a case that came out in the last couple of weeks of a woman in another state who um tested positive and she voluntarily quarantined and she told the state she was going to quarantine and she told her doctors that she was going to quarantine and she never did physically leave her house but she didn't sign the form and so they arrested her and they put a gps tracking 
anklet on her to make sure that she didn't leave her house. She never said that she wasn't going to comply with quarantine. She just did not sign the form and she got put on house arrest. That was one of the articles that was going around Facebook this week. So, um, all individuals arriving in Massachusetts by any means or mode, including residents who have left the state for anything more than transitory travel, are covered by the Massachusetts travel rule. Accordingly, even travelers not required to complete the form should act in compliance with the rule. So even if you don't count, you still count and you still have to do it. Let me zoom in on this for you guys because it looks pretty small there. So... The rule requires that you must quarantine for 14 days unless you are coming from a low-risk state, which is New England and Hawaii, because Governor Baker's probably going there, or one of his little lackeys are going there. You can produce, on request, proof of a negative test result for COVID-19 from a test administered on a sample taken not longer than 72 hours before your arrival in Massachusetts. And this is not actually completely true or if you meet the exemption criteria. You must quarantine until you receive the negative result. You may obtain a test at your own expense after your arrival in Massachusetts, but you must quarantine until you obtain a negative result. Again, individuals who fail to quarantine are subject to a $500 fine per day. And then more detailed information. So the form is your full name, your phone number, Email address, home address, um, your Massachusetts address, again, phone number, your arrival dates, your departure dates, whether or not you got a test or will be getting a test, your health status, your dependents, and you're attesting that you are not committing perjury under penalty of law. Um, so the exemption criteria are again travelers entering from low-risk states, which they say can change. So it, you could technically go to a low-risk state and then they could decide it's no longer low-risk. Um, and then uh, I will answer that in a minute. Um, and so they're, they're, they're saying that to be considered low-risk, there can only be six new cases per 100,000 residents per day, and the test rate has to be below 5% on a seven-day rolling average. Now, what's interesting about this is, you know, so I've been, you know, I, I've been talking about wanting to um, leave the state, and there are a lot of people freaking out about Florida, Tennessee, South Carolina. So I, you know, for shits and giggles, I decided... Um, that, okay, you know, let me, let me look at South Carolina. Cause everybody's saying, oh my God, if you go there, you're going to die, right? You're going to catch COVID and die. If you look at the numbers for South Carolina, um, they have less deaths, fewer deaths in the entire state than in Boston. And they're considered a high risk state. If I survived living in Massachusetts outside of Boston, during all of this thing, if I survived going to a thousand person event in New Hampshire where no one except for two people were masked and we were all huddled together and hugging and shaking hands and all of that um, for several days, I think I could survive in a state that has 1200 deaths total last time I looked. I mean, it's, it's, but it's high risk. Hmm. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, so travelers who meet the 72 hour test rule. Now this is interesting um, because even the kind of testing they're putting rules on. So you have to have pr provide proof of the negative test result. Um, it can only be a certain test. And is this where it says um, results of antibody tests are not accepted? There's a current list of approved tests. And it says somewhere there was a frequently asked questions thing that said 
that if you, let's see. So if you develop symptoms, if you have a negative test result, but you develop any of the symptoms of COVID, which could include a cough or a headache, you still need to get quarantined again and get tested again. If you have a negative test, but were exposed to someone else who tested positive, you need to get tested again and you still need to do another 14 days quarantine. If you got a negative antigen test, eh, you know what? They're not going to count it. You still need to get tested again and be quarantined again for another 14 days. So when they say all you need is a negative test result, that's not true. Like the requirements around it are really ridiculous. Um, so any people... So transitory travel, again, that's if you're just going through the state. If you're commuting for work or school, if you're receiving medical treatment, or if you are in the military or a state worker, basically, you don't need to quarantine. Anyone else has to quarantine, including, like I said, if you are dropping off a student, moving in a student, if you are a student, or if you stop anywhere for long enough where you could need an overnight stay. Um, so here are the requirements for quarantine. Travelers, along with their travel party, must separate from all other people for 14 days. Travelers must not be in public or otherwise leave the identified quarters. So you need to identify your quarters as well. So this is the problem. One of the problems is if you are a student moving into a dorm room, you're screwed. The living quarters must have a separate bathroom facility for each individual or family group. So that also doesn't count a dorm because there are shared community bathrooms. So again, if you are a college student, you're going to have to find some special place to go quarantine if you're coming in from out of state. Um, you must have cleaning supplies in the bathroom blah, blah, blah. Travelers must have a way to self-quarantine from other household members if a fever or other symptoms develop in a separate room with a door. So again, college students are screwed. During the quarantine period, no one else should be in the living quarters other than those in the travel party, including hotel staff or delivery persons. But you have to have food delivered to the living quarters, but you can't have any contact with delivery people. So I guess they're going to have to like leave it outside your door and, but you're not really supposed to be opening your door. So, I mean, these, these are pretty funky. Um, you have to have a supply of face masks to wear, even though you're not supposed to leave your house. Um, not allowed to leave their living quarters except to receive urgent medical care. You have to wash your hands, and if you don't, you're going to be subject to your $500 fine. Not really sure how they are going to track this. And aware, be aware of symptoms, and then uh, you can only decide to not quarantine if people don't develop symptoms. So if you, technically speaking, quarantine for your 14 days and you develop a cough on day 13, well, buddy, you got yourself another 14 days to go. And if you don't, that is $500 per day for everyone in your family. Now, again, like I said, it doesn't say on here how they're going to track it, but... Mm. If you remember, we had um, my friend Roscoe on here um, a couple months ago when this had started, and he was a uh, he's a trucker, and he spoke about how in Utah you cross over the border, and all of a sudden you get a mystical, magical text message on your cell phone that says, "Hey, we see that you just crossed into Utah. You need to fill out this form." There are rumors that Massachusetts is going to be doing something similar and they will be tracking GPS location data. There's also rumors that they will be checking banking information and credit cards and hotel reservations to see if you've left the state. And I don't put it fully past them seeing as the local state college here has announced they will be monitoring students' social media to make sure that they don't leave the state or congregate in groups. So if a college, a state college is doing it, why wouldn't the government do something like that? Mm. 
Um, and now on top of this, um, let's see if this, is this the same? These look like they're the, basically the same requirements here. Um, yeah. Oh, and also you can report any com concerns you have about someone being non-compliant to the Board of Health. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, these are the same requirements that we talked about before. So um, on top of that, I got some insider information that I'm probably not supposed to talk about because I'm probably not supposed to know, but I heard from a little bird that the schools are putting forth a plan. They're, they're, they're putting forth a plan, a plan where they're saying every school has to have three options. They have to have a fully in-school option, a hybrid option, and a fully at-home option. And they're making the, the state is making these schools make all of these plans but the school superintendents and the Department of Health have already decided that they will be closing down these schools and the entire state again in October for another lockdown for the duration of the winter. And that is the information that I got from a little bird. I'm not really allowed to say how or where. Um, I don't have proof of it. It was just information that I was given. It doesn't surprise me. It makes sense to me that they would do that. So I, I don't put it past them at all. Let me turn this light on. So that is the additional information that we have with that. So mandatory quarantine for anyone coming in the state or leaving the state for God knows how long. Um, there's rumors that they're going to be tracking license plates. And I, this is also feasible because I remember when I was working doing community health, uh, mental health down in Fall River years ago, um, the, the cops, there was tons of cars out there that weren't registered and would be on the streets. And so the cops, even way back then, like 10 years ago, had um, this software, hardware, whatever. They had this thing in their cop cars that basically you would just have to drive down the street and it would ping every single license plate to tell you who drove it and whether or not the car was registered so that the person could get a ticket and, and get a nasty letter in the mail if it wasn't properly registered. So if they could do that for license plates, I mean, they can definitely um, ping it and, and track people down by license plate <laughs> otherwise for, for travel. I mean, Rhode Island did that with New Yorkers. They, the cops were, were patrolling around and looking for out-of-state plates. The people were calling the police on out-of-state plates. They were roaming around grocery store parking lots looking for out-of-state plates. So I'm sure Massachusetts will figure out a way to do something similar. Um, now I'm going to get to the Super Chats in a minute, but before I do, I meant to mention this first thing and then totally forgot because I'm terrible. To a patch batch. I mentioned it at the last live stream and they have hit, they have hit their fundraising goal. So the two a patch batch basically is you guys helped raise enough money. So they are going to be printing off patches for all of the second amendment organizations and channels involved myself included. And so now at this point, anything that you donate goes to extra patches, for um, the different channels and the different organizations and things like that. So we can do giveaways and all kinds of fun stuff. And I believe um, if you donate $50, you get the full batch of um, 12 patches from all the different organizations. So there's myself, Guns and Gadgets is involved. Um, Gun Tube is in, uh, I believe, Clover Tack, a whole bunch of other people. Oh, yes, Pete just posted the link in the chat right now. So we have that going on. Also, 
USCCA has developed their own merch line now, which is really cool. And they sent me a care package this week. Let me make sure that I don't have my, I sent, it, it came with a USCCA tape on it. I want to make sure I don't show the side that has my address on it. So one of the things that they have now is they have apparel and I absolutely, they picked this shirt out. I did not pick this. They picked this out for me and it is absolutely perfect. I love it. It says lipstick in lead, carry confidence awesome very cool and it's nice and soft and it fits really well and they also sent me i'm excited about this there is a cap uh this one is a snapback which is good because i have a tiny little head so i can only wear snapbacks um, and i'll be talking about this in a video if i ever eventually have a time to do a video again so says born to protect and it is in really cool camo colors and i actually i like that um it's got the mesh back and it's got the light colors because this is going to be perfect for wearing to disc golf because it is light colored and it's got the mesh back so it won't keep in heat while it also keeps off the sun and um yeah it'll be good for owning the libs at disc golf <laughs> And the other thing they sent is this little like koozie, USCCA, Born to Protect as well. So it's a pretty good size here. It'll be a good cup of coffee or some nice cold water also on the disc golf course. And the little topper for it. So that's really exciting. Or you can, um, I believe you can also put a can in it. That's, I mean, well, you're supposed to put a can in it, but it can also be a vacuum tumbler. So it can be a koozie or a vacuum tumbler. I don't really typically drink anything that requires koozies because I'm weird and only drink water and coffee, and that's about it. So um, I will definitely be using it as a tumbler. But um, it's cool that you can do you use it for both. So this is just a sample of their new merch that they have. And the link for that is also down in the description. So that is our stuff for today as far as um, sponsors and partners and things like that. Um, all right. So we're going to go. I know a lot of Super Chats came in. I will read the ones that are appropriate um <laughs> my patrons know what's up they've got the exclusive scoop uh let's see um robert chappelle says just got the notification right now mm -hmm. happy friday that was actually right when we started but um Let's see. Trashman says, after adding blockade running to your skill, after adding blockade running to your skill set, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. <laughs> hmm. Ah, yes, Robin. This is one of the things I was going to talk about today. Um, it's now a class A misdemeanor to be out in public without a mask in parts of Tennessee. Nashville has a 10 p.m. curfew on bars. Apparently, apparently COVID-1984 is deadly after dark. Yes. So um, Tennessee, I didn't know that Tennessee was one of them, but it is surprising because it's Tennessee. But um, uh, Christoph says um, to escape and empty that bucket a bit. Thank you. And then, oh, Chester Thomas. Oh, that's such a cute little sticker. Oh, it's so cute. I can't tell because, like, I'm blind. And this monitor, my second monitor, is really bad. I can't tell if it's a little fox or a kitty. I think it's a little fox. It's super cute. Um, FL Sheepdog 1 is in the house and says, This used to be America, land of freedom. Not anymore, my friend. You know, depending where you live. Uh, Mr. Rover Pilot asked what he missed, so I saw that one and notified you, or told you. Um, Pierre says, when did Kim Jong-un take over Massachusetts WTF? Um, today, well, not even today. You know, he, Kim Jong-un took over Massachusetts the day of the Boston Marathon bomber when we had that lockdown. That was day one. 
because it was not until that happened where they totally locked down parts of the, sh the city and shut everything down and told people they couldn't leave their houses that then suddenly that became the, the norm for snowstorms too. And now this and all of this that's going on. So that, I trace it back to like that day. That was the first day. I mean, Charlie Baker came into the, to office before that, but that was the day. That was the day. Um, Joe Marisol says, I'll watch the whole video later. I have to do a 12 hour shift. Oh no. Well, have fun, I guess. Hope, hope, hope it didn't suck <laughs> when you watch this later. Lavender Joy, hello, says, giving you some of my dirty, dirty <laughs> blank money, dirty, dirty prawn money. <laughs> Thank you. I will not turn down the prawn money so long as I am not the one in the prawn. <laughs> I get requests for that a lot. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not, I'm just not, that's not this type of channel. I'm sorry. That's just not what we do here. Um, Robin Patty says the security of this nation depends on complete and total compliance. Yes. Yes. And the thing is, is, you know, People are acting like we are so non-compliant and that everything is awful. And, um, you know, there was that New York Times article that came out recently that said, well, actually, in fact, 80% of Americans say that they wear their masks and they wear it frequently, which is more than like half of Europe. But we are the evil Americans that are non-compliant and being too radical and want our haircuts. The whole haircut thing started because all of these politicians locked down their cities and their states and then went out and got haircuts. People weren't actually demanding haircuts. They were being satirical and pointing out the hypocrisy of their politicians. But, you know, it, it turned and morphed into, oh, America is awful. You know, there are people, there are people are risking public health because they want haircuts. Ugh. Anyways, <laughs> uh, getting a little riled up. Um, FL Sheepdog One says, arrest the politicians for violating our civil rights. Better yet, tar and feathers, time to end the BS. You are not wrong, my friend. Robert Chappelle says, is, Charles, is Charlestown, Charlestown still a super sketchy, contagious shithole? Yes. I haven't been there since the late 80s, but I can't imagine there's anything more infectious than Charlestown. Have you, do you have to quarantine if you've gone to Charlestown? Well, so it's not just Charlestown now. You probably also should quarantine if you go to Lynn, um, Revia. You'd be the baddest dude in Revia. Uh, Lawrence. Mm, what else is up there? Any of those places. Salem really isn't even that great. Uh, New Bedford. Fall River, Southie, Dorchester, Jamaica Plain, Roxbury. Oh, yeah. But Lynn. Lynn's probably the world's Chelsea. Chelsea. Chelsea, actually, when this first all started, there was actually this article in, um, it was either the Boston Herald or the Boston Globe, and it talked about how in Chelsea specifically, they stopped a bunch of people on the streets and tested them and found out that already, like, a quarter of the people they tested in Chelsea had COVID and it was like a month into it and that was it. <laughs> mm. Oh, Lin Lin, the city of sin. Uh, Torque one says, didn't know we were now living in the union of Soviet socialist states of America. You'll feel lucky today. <laughs> Um, Omega Rasset says, if you are a sinner, you need a confession and 14 days of penitence. Basically, if you have already done your, your penitence and come into contact with a sinner, well, yes, then you have to do it again. Over and over and over and over. Aaron Miller, thank you, says Vacation Fund. Uh, Jesse Meek says, 1984 was never anywhere near as much like... 1984 as 2020 is like 1984 that made sense in my head you're right and honestly um oh there is a new series that just came out that is based on brave new world and it's actually really really good i don't know if it's amazon or hulu or what it's one of those where all the episodes came out in the same day and we downloaded it um 
it was it's really good they modernized it they changed it some to make it a more um modern setting but it was really good and it was startling and rattling and at sometimes felt too real to today's world um oh yeah you guys should check it out it's really it's really good i liked it um and it's funny because in it <laughs> <laughs> these savages are Americans. I mean, and it was kind of like that in the book anyways, but like they really play it up. The savages are, are Americans with like their guns and they're fighting for freedom and you have to watch it. It's really good. Uh, Tony, thank you for the travel plans. Uh, Torque One says, everyone with any intelligence should be moving out of these authoritarian commie states and taking their tax money with them. Well, there is a mass exodus out of some of these states right now going to um, other more free places. Jesse Meek says, what happened to your wrist? Were you playing full contact disc golf again? So what happened to my wrist is, um, I don't actually know, it's probably tendonitis. Um, and it's weird because I'm a, I'm a righty and it's in my lefty. And actually my chiropractor is confused as to why it's in my left wrist as well, as opposed to my right. Um, it's actually been bothering me for a couple of months. Um, no full contact disc golf, but I do have a workout program that is a combination of like bodybuilding, CrossFit, and like animal flow, gymnastics moves stuff. Um, so there's a lot of like bear crawls and push-ups and burpees. And so probably my wrist got like irritated. I don't know, but to go like this is like painful and to put any pressure on it is like really painful. Um, the brace helps. I didn't wear it for most of the day today. Cause I was like, Oh, I probably don't need it if I'm not like doing anything crazy. But then, um, I was getting ready for the live stream and trying to put on my makeup and it hurt. So I'm like, I better put on the brace. So, um, yeah, I was like, oh, should I, I was like, oh, I could go tell my regular doctor, but that kind of feels like a waste of time. And my chiropractor kind of said the same thing too. And whenever I go and see him, he like pops it back into place and then it feels good for a day. So yeah. Um, okay. So let me pull up some of these other links that I saved up for you guys. Um, I send them to myself in like Facebook messages sometimes. So we've got something from Washington. We've got Indiana. Um, oh, Portland, man, Portland is going nuts right now. And we have something in Feedly. We'll do, um, we'll do that. Just, I guess, talk amongst yourselves for a moment. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a DC. We have a whole bunch of places um, that are doing crazy, crazy things right now oh god this I, I i have to pull this up first because i didn't even i saw this and i thought it was satire and it is not it is not uh i wish it was this is not related to anything that we said in the description but this is where we we have to talk about this we, we, it just has to happen. Just let that sink in for a minute. Anyone watching? So, <laughs> at one point there was an article that came out in the New York Post. Um, again, early on in, in the COVID-1984 shenanigans in which um some researchers detected they tested a whole bunch of people and they found like two men 
out of the hundreds that they tested that had traces of the COVID-1984 virus in their semen. And then they said, oh, no, it could be sexually transmitted. People should not have sex. There was also an article that came out in the New York Post where they said, well, people should avoid kissing while they're having sex. So they should wear face masks during sex. That article made its rounds around social media and actually caused several people to ask me if the New York Post was a real news outlet. And sadly, I had to tell them that it is. And it is not, in fact, a satirical news outlet. It is not the Babylon Bee. So those things already went around. Now the CDC is recommending glory holes in order to have safe sex. This video was not monetized beyond Super Chats, by the way, so uh, we can talk about these things and hopefully YouTube doesn't kill the live stream midstream because that can happen. <laughs> oh, God, I just can't. I can't believe this. So this is right off of the CDC website. Let's see if it's still on there. COVID-1984 and sex. If you're feeling sick, sick skip sex. Well, okay. Um, and then uh, if you're feeling well and have no symptoms, they suggest you masturbate because you are your safest sex partner. And it won't spread COVID. If you masturbate with a partner, you should do so while being physically distant. And it even says if you're feeling well and have no symptoms. So I don't know why you should be staying away from your partner if you're feeling well and have no symptoms. They also suggest use of sexting and online chat rooms, which I, I thought weren't really even supposed to be a thing anymore and group cam rooms not even solo cam rooms group cam rooms <laughs> to engage in activity that doesn't spread COVID-1984 then again this is under if you're feeling well and have no symptoms you should if you are going to have sex with a partner take precautions like wearing a mask and social distancing while having sex. <sighs> okay, CDC. Sure. Steps to protect yourself. Wash your body with soap and water. Wash your hands. Wash toys. Wear a face covering or mask because heavy breathing can create more droplets that may transmit COVID. I can't believe we're talking about this. I really want to do a video about this, but I know that YouTube will not allow it. There is no way with the way that they already don't like me, there is no way, even if I didn't monetize this, that I, I would get this past YouTube for a regular, there is no way. Choose positions that limit face-to-face -face contact, avoid or limit kissing. Use barriers like walls, for example, glory holes. Um, wasn't this one of the things that was condemned years ago, like in the 80s and 90s? Um, because it didn't... Don't they arrest people for this? Like, I thought they arrested people for stuff. Don't they, like, arrest people for using glory holes in parks and stuff like that? And in, in, in public bath? Isn't that a thing? Like, am I wrong? Did I just... Andy says do a Patreon video on it. You know what? That is a really good idea. That is an excellent idea. I can do a Patreon and BitChute exclusive video and, like, library exclusive video about... Thank you, Andy. You are brilliant. And I can write it while I am traveling because I'm going to have plenty of time sitting in the car. Oh, God. I can't believe this, guys. This is so stupid and insane. 
Uh, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna have to make this happen. We're gonna have to do a subscribe star Patreon and like exclusive video or like a bit shoot exclusive video or something for this. I'll figure out who's getting it and what what the deal is. But <laughs> is there a link for this? See, I'll put the link. I'll put the link. I'll put the link. <laughs> the link will be in the chat. <laughs> Draw a diagram of how it works. No, thank you. It's CDC Canada, but it is still the CDC. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. I, I can't. I can't. You guys, this is real life. This is not like I mean maybe maybe there is truth to some to to Elon Musk's theory that we're in a simulation. Um <laughs> We're in the Matrix, that's what it is, or we're in like the Truman show or something and like the social planners and the social engineers are just messing with us. <laughs> There are some people saying things in the chat that I cannot read on air. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so, yeah, that's going on. <laughs> oh, let me see if I can find uh, for later on that Cato poll. If we get to it. Um... Because I know that that was posted and has also made the rounds. Um, well, okay, we'll we'll go we'll we'll go with the mask mandates first. Um, this lady looks pleasant. DC mayor, anyone older than two without a mask in public triggers a fine of up to a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. So this came out on Wednesday. Uh, Mayor Bowser, not to be confused with the supervillain in Super Mario, which basically the same thing, issued an order that anyone older than two years old caught without a mask in public could face a fine of up to a thousand dollars. Now, um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pause this so we're not seeing Ben Shapiro here. Um, we'll go to the Hill article, actually. How about we do that? There we go. Um, and now I, I've, 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 I know some people that work in daycares that have small children. I have seen small children out and about in the world. Um, I would imagine it's really difficult to keep a mask on a three-year-old or four-year-old or five-year-old or six-year-old or anyone under the age of like 10, right? And now any any child over the age of two, if you have a three-year-old that takes their mask off out in public, you can be fined a thousand dollars. That is absolutely insane. Um, and of course it was announced on Twitter because everything is announced on Twitter these days. Um, and she said it at a press conference. And she said, well, what it means is basically if you leave your house, you should wear a mask. So if you're waiting for a bus, if you're ordering food at a restaurant, if you're sitting in a cubicle in an open office, you need to have a mask. Um, and now it says it's not enforced on children under the age of three or people who are actively eating or drinking. Um, but you have to be under the age of three. So if you're three, you're not exempt. Um, so we have that one going on. And then we also have Mayor Inslee in this sparkly blue mask. Um, he, let's see, was he the one that announced, he, he announced all these new requirements as well. And, you know, Jay Inslee, he's great. Um, so you can have your wedding and funeral now, but you can only occupy the building of up to 20% or up to 30 people starting August 6th. 
Um, maximum table size for dining is five. Um, no pool tables or anything allowed until phase four. And here we go. Masks required in all common areas. Um, starting July 25th. Doesn't say what the um, penalty is, but in Indiana, it's now a Class B misdemeanor punishable by up to six months in jail for not wearing a mask in public because that's super cool and not tyrannical at all. So the governor of Indiana has announced all residents and visitors in state will be required to wear face coverings such as masks in public or risk facing a criminal charge. And it's interesting that they include visitors because if you're from out of state and you don't know this rule, it doesn't matter. Uh, could be charged with a class B misdemeanor, which is punishable by a fine and up to six months in jail. So you come for vacation or you pass through and stop at a gas station or something, and then you get stuck with a criminal charge and six months in jail, and you're just not going to be able to leave because that's cool. And again, not tyrannical at all. So their, their order is a little different, and it applies to anyone over the age of eight as opposed to three. I still can't get over that. The mandate will require everyone over the age of eight years old to cover their faces at all indoor spaces, public transport and vehicle services, such as taxis, as well as outdoor public spaces when you can't socially distance from those who you do not live with. Face coverings will be required in schools for students third grade and above, as well as all teachers, school staff, and visitors. You get exemptions for medical purposes, disabilities, exercising, eating, and drinking. And they're like, oh, well, the mask police will not be patrolling the streets, but there are already articles out of other states in certain cities where, ma where the police are, in fact, patrolling the streets and handing out citations when they see people without a mask. And I mean, what's interesting is like, so they say that there's a medical exemption, but legally you can't ask someone about a medical exemption because that violates ADA and HIPAA. Mm. So it's going to be interesting to see how exactly they're going to enforce this. But again, like I said, there was um, that article about the woman who went, was put under house arrest for not signing the COVID paperwork. Um, I'm still reading some things in the chat that I cannot say out loud. Uh, now let me find this. Cato study that came out that people are discounting because it's Cato. I trust Cato way more than I would trust a lot of other people. Oh, by the way, that DC uh, mask mandate exempts government employees and lawmakers. So do as I say, not as I do. Uh... Let's pull up So this I thought was interesting as well. So a new poll from Cato finds that 62% of Americans say that they have political views that they are afraid to share. And man, can I relate to this. And I am sure there are many of you that can relate to this as well. <laughs> so... Um, the, the tagline also says that 50% of strong liberals support firing Trump donors, 36% of strong conservators, 36% of strong conservatives support firing Biden donors. So that's not quite half. Um, it's, it's maybe two thirds as opposed of what liberals say. Um, and 32% are worried about missing out on job opportunities because of their political opinions, which is ridiculous. So 62% of people say that the political climate these days prevents me from saying things I believe because others might find them offensive. That is a terrible, 
terrible, sad day. And I will pop this in the chat as well for folks so that you can see it there. So let's zoom in so you guys can read it better. So a new Cato national survey finds that self-censorship is on the rise in the U.S. Nearly two-thirds, 62% of Americans, say the political climate these days prevents them from saying things that they believe. The share of Americans who self-censor ha has risen several points since 2017 when 58% of Americans agreed with this statement. That is awful. That is awful. But again, 2017, at that point, um, Trump was already in office and anyone who voted for him was seen as a racist, deplorable, xenophobic, homophobic, all of the isms and all of the icks. <laughs> so, I mean, the censorship had already started at that point. That was already past the point of like YouTube censoring voices, Facebook censoring voices, Twitter censoring voices. Um, and what's interesting is that this crosses partisan lines, which surprises me. Um, majorities of, de of Democrats, independents, and Republicans all agree that they have uh, opinions that they are afraid to share. Now, I am imagining that that's probably um, Democrats not wanting to share because of far left, um, because they don't want to be condemned by the far left would be my guess. So strong, there we go. Yep, strong liberals stand out, however, as the only political group who feel they can express themselves. Look at that. I got it right, and I hadn't even read the article yet. Nearly 6 in 10, or 58%, of staunch liberals feel they can say what they believe. However, centrist liberals feel differently. A slim majority of liberals feel they have to self-censor, as do 64% of moderates and 77% of conservatives. This demonstrates that political expression is an issue that divides the democratic coalition between centrist Democrats and their left flank. Interestingly, I saw something today talking about how Democrats are talking about, like, seceding from the country or something. So here's the actual um, little graph that shows. So um, the statement was, the political climate these days prevents me from saying things I believe because other people might find them offensive. And the agree goes up. Um, once you get to like the moderates, it goes up and up and up and stays up there for conservatives and strong conservatives. Um, but disagree is really the highest among strong liberals and then drops below 50% after that. So that is not surprising with cancel culture. Um, and then here we have by age. So um, <laughs> this is really interesting too. So um, the agree has stayed the same among strong liberals between the ages of 30 and 42-ish, we'll say. That has been consistent, but it's uh, it's dropped, or I mean, it's risen as you go down with ages and um, political affiliations, which is interesting. Um, and then... Here we go, we're 50% of strong liberals. So 50% of your far lefties support firing people for donating to Trump. While 36% of strong conservatives support firing Biden donors. And that's interesting. I don't think that we should really be firing people for what they do in their private time, unless I suppose they bring it into the workplace and advertising it all over the place. But it's still, it you know, it's funny because everyone says like, whoa, conservatives are so narrow minded and blah, 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 blah. But look, only 36% of them think that we should be firing people for donating to Biden while half of the far left think that just because someone supported Trump, they don't deserve to have a job. <laughs> but again, it is, oh, the far right and the alt right and conservatives that are so narrow minded. Awful, awful, awful. 
um, nearly a quarter of Americans would support firing a business executive who personally donates to Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden's campaign. Um, so, I mean, even that is a lower number. Um, and it, it's mostly around young people. The older you get, the less likely you support firing someone for their political donations. So then we have, you know, the nice little graph of it. Um, so here we go. Like, look at that. I mean, that's just ridiculous. 32% of people worry that their political views could harm their employment. Um, I would technically be among this number because I'm living in Massachusetts. It, it, everything is kept buttoned down and, and quiet, and I don't tell anyone anything <laughs> except for you guys and when people unfortunately stumble upon the channel. Nearly a third of employed Americans say they personally are worried about missing out on career opportunities or losing their job if their political opinions became known. That is so sad. That is so sad. And unfortunately, the, the bulk of people that we see that happening to, excuse me, are conservatives. Um, I know there was that highly publicized case of that woman who was fired for being on the far left and supporting, for supporting BLM. But really she, she had made those TikTok videos talking about wanting to stab people for not wearing masks or stab people for voting for Donald Trump. And it was the fact that she was threatening to stab people that got her fired, not the fact that she was supporting BLM or far left policies. It was specifically because she was threatening to stab people on social media and celebrating it. Um, and this is interesting. Liberals, moderates, and conservatives are all about the same, worrying that their political views could get them fired or high, uh, harm their career trajectory. I'm guessing again that it is um, moderate leftists and not the far left, as is the um, just like the earlier stats were. Um, this is interesting as well. It is higher among people who are Hispanic. They are worried about their political views becoming known. So that, that makes me say, because there is this assumption that people of color are going to vote Democrat and always vote Democrat. And you see it all over in social media. Um, anyone who does not tow the far left party line is called a race trader. So, I mean, this doesn't really surprise me. I'm, I'm making assumptions about what their political views are. Um, oh, Tristan says that that woman wasn't fired. Deloitte revoked her internship. Okay, thank you. That's right. It was Deloitte. Um, right. So I'm, I'm making assumptions here, but being, again, that there already is the assumption that people of color will vote Democrat, and they are called race traders. If they don't, then I'm making the assumption that there are 30% of like Hispanic people and 22% of African Americans out there that don't tow those party lines and are afraid of people finding out. Um, it's also common in households earning less than $20,000 a year. Or if you make more than $100,000 a year, and that's probably because a lot of people in those higher up positions are Democrats. Um, almost half of Americans with postgraduate degrees say they are worried their careers could be harmed if others discovered their political opinions. 34% of college graduates, 28% with college experience, and 25% of high school graduates. So that's interesting as well because I know a lot of the people that I know that are in high paying positions that do voice their political opinions all over the internet and all over the dang place are far left. So, oh, and here we go. Republicans with the most education are most worried their political views could harm them at work. Look at that. I'm, I'm predicting the answers before I even get there. While with Democrats, they're not really worried and that stays about the same. Not really surprising to me at all. Um, 
and then it talks about the implications and the methodologies. So, I, like I said, not surprising to me at all that that's what those results say. All right, let's get into some super chats. There is not Dungeons and Dragons tonight, but there is food that will be waiting for me at home. <laughs> So we'll grab some super chats and chat a little bit. Um, I need to stop putting so many topics, I think, to cover in these videos, or I need to cover them faster or something, because we never get to all of them. Um, as far as the Operation Legend, which I think is like a really funny name, um, what that entails is the DEA, ATF, and FBI, I believe, being sent to Chicago and New York and all of these cities to help tamp down on um, the Chaz and Chop areas that have arisen in different places. There's one in like Pennsylvania right now that I didn't even know about. They're calling it a homeless encampment, but really it's it's a Chaz Chop area. Um, and it's interesting because like in Chicago, for example, uh, it was formally denounced. The mayor of Chicago formally denounced having these uh, federal agents come in, but then in private, she agreed with it and, and said like, oh yeah, please come in. I don't agree with the federal agents. I don't agree with like the ATF FBI showing up to any of this stuff. Well, let me, okay, let me walk that back. Let me walk that back. Um, I suppose it really depends on the express purpose and what they're going to be doing. Um, if they are dismantling areas where people have been taking over public property and menacing the residents, okay, I could see how there would be an argument for that. If they're just like strolling in and like policing areas now on a federal level, that's pretty scary. If they... You know, but that's another thing is like, you know, now everyone's, you know, crying, crying about this and crying about these federal agents that showed up in like Portland and were arresting people. Where were these people when we found out about like the Honan Square black site in Chicago, for example, or the state police black sites in New York? That stuff has been known for years. I talked about Honan Square when I guested on a podcast back in like 2013 or 2014. A friend of mine had a podcast called The Currency of Anarchy and they had me on for a roundtable discussion and we talked about the Honan Square black site. I believe it is still somewhere in um, my videos on a, a playlist somewhere. This is not anything new but they only get upset about it when they are coming in to arrest Antifa people. Um, like, you know, sorry that you are being morally and ethically and philosophically inconsistent. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Um, bup, bup, bup. Um, okay, so we got that. So Twerk1 says the patch set is cool, got mine, and it looks like the fundraiser did well. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, I, I didn't know how my logo was going to look put into a patch because the printing company that I use for my regular merch basically said it was too complicated to embroider and put on a hat or, or like embroider on a shirt or anything. So I didn't think it could be done. But yeah. Um, no, Pete over at Gun Websites, his people did really good. And it's it's going to look pretty spiffy. Um, Rose Blight says, just put in purchase of $50 to a patch batch. They will look great on my blue jean jacket. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan Stevie says, did you see the Eric July videos about why he isn't going to defend the Marxists? I did not, but I can guess what he says. I can guess his position, um, probably because these are the same people that have been talking about um, how people should have their guns taken away and should be shot for protesting. That's uh, That would be my guess. I'll have to check it out, but that would be my guess. Uh, David Neal asks if I saw Dr. Fauci's first pitch. Yes, I did, and I lolled. 
<laughs> um, Ro Mr. Rover Pilot says, I see that your plant perked up. Yes, because I played D&D &D on Wednesday this week, so I was here to water it. It's called a, um, it's called a prayer lily, and the um, little information sticky thing that came with it actually says on it not to water it until it wilts because then otherwise you're over watering it so i i try not to do but i'm only here once a week now so i water it every time i come in um <laughs> andy says i've used up my creativity to the day for the day so money's for whatever thank you <laughs> um uh, uncle bob's b says don lemon failed the acuity test I don't know what that means, so I'll have to look into that. Um, Watchdog says, I could live to check out this series, or I would love to check out this series. What is it called? It's called Brave New World. And um, let me see real quick what, what platform it's on and who put it out, though. Um... Sorry, I... I... My, that was my husband being like, when are you coming home for food? Um, what was I looking at? Brave New World. I like how I have a computer in front of me and I'm like pulling out <laughs> my phone to Google it. And it was actually, it's an American show. Um, so it's on Peacock TV, whatever that is. You can find it if you know the right places to look. Um, oh, it premiered on NBC Universal streaming service and Sky One in the UK. There are nine episodes. You can also find it on other places that I won't mention. <laughs> um, Mr. Roberpilot says, most of you children don't remember 1984. The real one, I was coming back from Beirut in 1984, U.S. Marine Corps. Yes, I know the book. Um, Aaron Miller says Iron Maiden has a song based on Brave New World. Check it out. Great song. Oh, cool. I did not know that. Mr. Roberpilot says there is a sale on full body condoms. Um, Robert Chappelle says sold. I'm signing up for Patreon tonight. So I definitely need to make sure I do that video for you guys. Um, Jesse Meek says public indecency is a crime, but the usual legal issue is when there are funds exchanged for glory. LOL. Um, <laughs> I'll get to that one in a sec. Um, Pierre says money is out of shame for being a Canadian after that BC CDC post. It's okay. We forgive you. It's not your fault. I mean, technically I'm a first generation American because my mom came from French Canada. So, uh, I'm half guilty, I guess. Um, Robin Patty says that class A misdemeanor in Tennessee for not wearing a mask in some counties carries up to 11 months and 29 days in jail plus a fine. So one day short, one day short of, of a year. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. Oh my God. Ten really Tennessee. Like, what is going on down there? That's not that's not supposed to happen in Tennessee. Merck24 says, I heard a political analyst say that the government should use cell phone location to make sure people with COVID stay home. Besides infringing privacy, you can just leave your phone home and leave. Well, and they were supposedly doing that for the protests as well, tracking cell phone data. Um so that wouldn't be surprised wouldn't surprise me at all if they were going to do that for COVID-1984. Mr. Roberpilot says you note that the far right is more likely to have a job than the far left. The far left would be losing that job in feminist dance studies. <laughs> you know there is actually a far left college out here so called Hampshire College that doesn't have grades and you, uh, shoes and shirts are not required for class, and you can make up your own program and your own degree, which is kind of funny. Um, so I'm sure that there is feminist dance studies at several schools up here. Um, 23 Degrees says, paid advertising without glory holes. Link in chat when you say so. Uh, yes, go ahead. Link it in the chat. 
Um, 23, he says that dude, 11 months, that's, I think I would defend myself from that. That's a good way. That's a good way to word it to my friend. Um, <laughs> ridiculous. Um, let's see. Cause I know there's people that are not super chatting, but are tagging me. So let's see. Um, thank you, Q, for putting the link in the description. So I'm actually, the next video, I've written another video. I haven't had time to record it. And um, you guys know about it if you were here last week. It's basically a brief synopsis about everything that's going on and how I'm going to sort of um, changes that I will be making to the channel to ensure that you guys can get my content um yes um i mean i, I talked about on the, the stream already last week my various options and things i'm gonna do and you know what maybe my, my, my patreons know or my patrons know what's up maybe maybe there will be an opportunity for uh well i'll test it out with this video for some exclusive content and see how that goes squid monkey is leaving for the night good night sorry that i'm seeing that after the fact um, Chris Rayner says, is there a regular mail address to send donations? There is, um, let me get that for you. I stopped putting it in the descriptions of videos, um, because of the doxing thing, but I can, I can put it in there right now and I don't have it memorized because I'm a bad person, but it is a PO box. And actually, I do have um, I do have a Liberty Doll bank account now, so I can accept checks. I used to not be able to accept checks, but that is the address. Um, oh, and fun fact: I spoke to my LLC lawyer this week, and it was awesome. Um, he 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 came in and he sat down, and he did not do the six foot rule. And the first thing he said to me was like. So what do you think about these fake COVID numbers coming out of Florida? And I was like, yes. And then we had a discussion and he talked about um, what gun he is planning to buy next. So that was super exciting. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, yeah, pe people are saying Peacock sounds like NBC. Oh, I get it. The 3570 was for 357. I got that. John Morgan says, I was in Germany in 1984. That must have been interesting. Um, oh, and the name of the song from My Iron Maiden is called Brave New World. Okay, I'll check that out. Um, let's see. Um, Charles Sexton says, I'm a disabled Marine Corps vet and I did not fight for our country just to see it turn socialist. We are a free country and we need to stay that way. Yeah, I don't know. Things, oh man, things are looking all kinds of crazy and who, who know? who knows? Um, William Robinson says that new cars have tracking chips. That is terrifying. Um... David Neal says that he has been to Montreal. Gun Websites asks, if masks works, can't they keep the people in jail with masks? Hmm. It's a good question. <laughs> um, Mr. Rover Pilot says, made you laugh. My mission is accomplished. Good job, sir. Thank you for your service. Um, Andy says, I will be tracking view counts to see if it makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for all you guys. Andy is amazing. Um, and he put together a whole little spreadsheet of every video I've ever made. And like the, the views and all of this other stuff to try and like track YouTube trends and how the algorithms are hitting me and, and the demonetization trends and stuff. Like he, Andy is amazing. He does all kinds of amazing things for this channel. Um, Someone asking about my wrist again. Yeah, it's probably tendonitis, and I'm hoping if I wear this brace, it'll go away so I can do regular, like, push-ups and bear crawls and burpees again because I am a weirdo that loves burpees. <laughs> Legacy Patriot says, I'm not afraid to talk politics. My politics will trump your politics. 
I will say though, what's really fun and interesting, and we'll 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 finish up on these notes, I suppose. Um, and so a couple of interesting things happened this week. A friend of mine who is on the left recently started asking questions about home defense and the best firearms for home defense. Um, someone else who is on the, the who had been on the left um, on my personal Facebook that I went to college with bought her first firearm this week and has gone through all of her safety training. There's also someone else that I used to work with who has clearly been red pilled at this point. Um, and I am actually seeing people in um, the disc golf community who are starting to talk about voting libertarian this election and are prompting other people to look into Joe Jorgensen, which I think is really cool. Um, it's nice to see that from people who are not already in like libertarian circles and, um, you know, getting some of the ideas out, you know, about freedom and liberty in general. Um, and I think that that's really cool. You know, they're, they're telling Biden voters to, to, if they can't vote for Trump to go vote libertarian. And I think that that's pretty cool. Um, Iron Daisy says that newer cars can't have those chips removed. It won't run. Oh, that's interesting. Um, blunder buses. People are talking about the blunder buses again. Oh, my new character for our new D&D in space. It's seven C's in space. So it's a D10 system. So you get to pick like a sword school. And instead of a sword school, I picked a gun school. And it's called Mossberg. It is the Mossberg shooting school. And my guy definitely... Uh, he, he, he likes his shotguns. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, Bob Law says that AR-15s are flying off the shelves and stores are having a hard time keeping them in stock. Yes, I have heard that. Um, a friend of mine that lives in Maine actually ordered something even from PSA a couple weeks ago and has been having trouble. They keep running out. <laughs> um, let's see... Um, and David Neal says, do they play the national anthem and do a dry drone fly over at disc golf events? No, they do not. Um, there would probably never be enough people there to do that. Um, Andy says he wants to get a flintlock. Now that is pretty cool. I would endorse that message. Hmm. I love like historical things like that. I think that would be really cool. I think it would be really cool to get like um, some like German World War II stuff just because like I'm fascinated with that um, time period in history because it's 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 so insane the things that happened in that time period and I don't I don't know I just think it's it's interesting um, and when I said when I when I so I wanted to clarify on the, the libertarian, when I was talking about people saying to vote libertarian, they're talking about Joe Jorgensen and not Joe Biden. Don't, they're telling people not to vote for Joe Biden and to vote for the other Joe. <laughs> so, and you know what? It's um, 5%. If they get 5%, then they are automatically put on the ballot in those states for future elections without having to fight for it. So, and there were some states that the Libertarian got the 5% last election. So I, I, I do think that it is possible. Okay, guys. Um, oh, we got another super chat that came in. Mr. Volver Pilot says, ask a US, U.S. Marine Corps PMI about self-defense firearms. Me. <laughs> I am sure that you know a lot. I'm sure that you know a thing or two. That is for sure. Um, beans, bullets, and bandages said, ordered a Hellcat with your link from PSA. That is so illegal in Massachusetts that I don't know what it is, but it sounds cool. Something called a Hellcat. I, I can endorse that. Um, oh, so, oh, I just, someone said something about diesel punk. Tennessee Beowulf says diesel punk would be a good look for you. So I'm actually, I'm always writing stories and, and the, 7C character that I'm playing now and that I also played for the last Heroes Unlimited campaign 
actually the story that he that I pulled him from, I'm writing to be kind of like diesel punk. So I'm really excited about that. I'm just making crap up as I go. Um, and it's clearly a dark country or like gothic western soundtrack. <laughs> uh, and okay, we've got a few more super chats. Oh, I missed. Oh, J. Derek Williams, you had one earlier because I saw it here. And then when I went through, I didn't see it. I didn't see it on the YouTube side. I saw it on the StreamYard side, but not the YouTube side. And I apologize for that. Um, but it was a question that I wouldn't be able to answer on air anyways, and that I would have to direct you to my Patreon for it. And I think that you have figured, yes. Um, yes. That I cannot discuss on air today. Um... But he says that I will someday have a Palmetto State Armory in town. Then you can build a non-compliant, non-mass compliant AR. And yes, cannot read that on the air today. <laughs> um, and Gun Websites, real quick, says that he would like to thank the folks from last week got the, that got the 2A patch batch off the ground and on its way. Thank you for supporting Liberty Doll and the other 11 Pro 2A projects. Yes, everyone, thank you for doing that. That is super exciting. I've never had patches, so I'm pretty excited. I'm going to have to figure out how, like, giveaways work and how you pick random comments and stuff like that. I'm going to have to. I know that um, Gun Websites has done that. I know Jared does them, so I'm going to have to ask them for some advice. Um, Mr. Rover Pilot says, just sold an unfired Mauser P08 Luger. Very cool. Um, Tristan says, so the Hellcat is a Springfield Armory pocket pistol. That is cool. That's so cool. Um, Q says he's looking at getting a 300 blackout pistol upper from PSA. I'm going to have to like go down to actual PSA and be like, sup guys, you support my channel. It's going to be random people in the store that have no idea who I am, but I'm going to be like, sup, finger guns. <laughs> all right and i think i had one more come in and then we will wrap it up rose blight says they still manufacture tommy guns with 50 to 100 round magazines i have shot one and it was not as fun as i thought it would be when we honeymooned in south carolina we went to a place in columbia and we shot tommy guns and we shot, um, oh, what are they, P90s? The the bullpup, the bullpup old secret service thing. I forget the names of all of these things. We shot a World War II belt-fed machine gun. And I specifically requested the Tommy gun. It was disappointing, <laughs> which was very sad. But, I mean, it was, I mean, they weren't exactly the most accurate things in the world. And, you know, but. It was cool. It was just, I had very high hopes. And B. Griffin, again, is asking about my wrist. I talked about it earlier, tendinitis, pretty sure. It's not officially diagnosed, but um, that is what I believe it was, is. All right, so it is 8.45. It's 8.46. I'm supposed to be home and eating already. I have pizza waiting for me. I am very excited about it. Um, so thank you everyone. Oh, I'm sorry that that's shaking. Thank you everyone for tuning in, um, and for dealing with my lateness and my disorganization earlier. I promise it was for a good reason and I will share that reason at a l later date. Um, MP5. Yes. I also, an MP5 was one of them as well. We shot like five things and an MP5 is one of them. Thank you. I, I always get it confused because, um, I have a disc called like an M4 and yeah, anyways. Um, yes, we shot an MP5. I'm pretty sure. So again, everyone, thanks for tuning in and hanging out. Thank you for everyone in the chat. Uh, thanks for everyone who checked out the two-way patch batch and helped get that um, all the way to the goal. Uh, checking out the partners in the description, everyone who sent in super chats. 
thank you, you guys and the folks on Patreon, Subscribestar, the folks that are using the affiliate links, you guys are in fact the ones that are keeping this channel alive and funding the channel at this point. YouTube is doing nothing. Zero. YouTube is doing zero. YouTube is giving me a dollar a day, if that. Um, if I'm lucky. So it is. It is 100% you guys, the viewers. Um, all right. So again, <laughs> Jen Farmer, I'm not going to read that one out loud. <laughs> She just, she says, never apologize for being late. I'm not going to read the rest of it, but thank you. Um, all right, folks, I will see you next week. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have some stuff. Good night.